All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mikio Akima, and I work for the Japanese Community Youth Council. Uh, I will be your MC today for today's event. Uh, on behalf of the Center and JCYC, we would definitely like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we aren't able to meet in person, so we do hope you enjoy today's virtual Children's Day, uh, as we are going to have a variety of entertainment lined up. Our first one is going to be a tour of the center's girls and boys day doll display. So please enjoy and thank you all for coming. everyone, my name is Stephanie and I work at the Japanese Culture and Community Center of Northern California, or the Center. Today I'm excited to show you two different displays, one for Girls' Day and one for Children's Day, or Boys' Day. Children's Day is on May 5th, 5-5, and we typically have a big celebration out in the Peace Plaza. This year, we're doing things a little bit differently. And for our school visits program, we're also doing that a little bit differently. Usually you'll get to come into our center and look at all of our displays. But I think this will show you a good deal of what we have typically on display. For Girls' Day, it's on March 3rd or 3-3, and we have beautiful doll displays. Now each of these doll displays are typically set up for all of the girls in the household. These doll displays can be very traditional and very large as you, there's some pictures of them with multiple, multiple layers. Typically though, our doll displays are about five to seven layers. This one right here has five layers and I'll take you through all of the different layers. The layers represent the hierarchy. So on the top level, you have the emperor and the empress. Now, these are probably recognizable figures for you. It's Mickey and Minnie. The Empress actually has 12 layers of clothing, 12 layers. So you can imagine she probably gets pretty hot, but she also probably needs a lot of people to help her get on all of those layers. So you have her ladies in waiting right here. This one in the middle has a little necklace. She has a teapot, I think. I wanna say this one has some sort of saucer for maybe food or a drink. Then on the third layer, you have the band. The band is playing some drums. Um, I think this is a flute and some other instruments as you can see. Now, on the fourth level, you can see right here, you have the ministers and the ministers would be the ones to advise the emperor and the empress. And on the last level, you can see right here in the middle and then on the two sides, um, the protectors for all of the layers, but especially the emperor and the empress. So you can also see a few other items on here as well. There's some lanterns, there's a tree right here, another tree right here with some fruit on it. And then right here, really tiny, um, are some food. And that food is actually mochi. Mochi is pounded rice, and typically we do get to make that at the center. And this rice is typically, um, the pounded rice or the mochi, is typically colored pink, white, and green. The pink represents the sakura or the cherry blossom blooms. The white represents snow and green represents growth, probably for trees and such. So all of these uh, Children's Day displays, as you can see, have a similar layout. And some of them are just the emperor and the empress, like this cute one <laughs> with a Mickey and a Minnie, or this one with the Hello Kitties. So we actually have a lot of very special displays that were given to us as gifts that people probably had in their homes for their own girls. On Girls' Day, we celebrate girls' happiness and health. 
uh, for the family, for the girls within the family. And for boys, it's pretty similar. On this side, we have our children's day or boys day displays. Now, boys day was originally named boys day. Um, and then in 1948, they changed the name to children's day and that celebrated on May 5th. So you have girls day, three, three, and children's day, boys day on five, five. So those um, odd numbers and those same numbers are very important for a lot of Japanese holidays in Japan and that we celebrate here in the US. For Boys Day or Children's Day, we're celebrating a lot of the same things as Girls Day, health, happiness, um, and specifically bravery and courage for the boys in the household. Um, these Girls Day displays uh, had a lot of dolls or hinaningyo, um, and these Boys Day displays also have some dolls, but there is one big, big difference as you can see here. Uh, the Boys Day displays or the Children's Day displays typically have um, armor and there's uh, some very important um, pieces of armor that are um, on display for Boys Day or Children's Day. So this helmet is called a kabuto um, and this is typically um, displayed on a lot of different uh, Boys Day or Children's Day displays. So you can see it right here, you can see it with the Mickey, um, you can see it um, on this little Mickey as well and over here. So that's going to be a common theme of having these helmets, um, the kabuto or the armor to represent that strength and courage of the boys in the family. Another thing that's displayed on Children's Day or Boys Day are these beautiful flying carps. Um, these are called koi no bori. And these koi no bori, bori are supposed to represent all of the boys in the household. So right here we have one, two, three, four, five koinobori outside this house. It looks like it's displayed on a rooftop. And so that would represent five boys in the household. Over here you have maybe two or three, I think. So maybe three boys in the household. And uh, you have a couple of other ones hanging, um, probably from other households. So these koinobori represent swimming upstream. So again, that strength and courage. Um, a lot of these boys' day displays or children's day displays are supposed to ward off bad luck and illness um, from the boys or the children in the, hall, in, in the household. Um, over here, you have another warrior who has some, um, it looks like a, a bow and arrow and then a sword. Um, and then it also has koinobori on the side. So this represents um, a lot of the, the displays that would be um, shown on Children's Day or Boys Day on 5-5. Five five. Awesome, welcome back. What a great start to our uh, Children's Day today. I hope you were definitely able to pick up some of the information on why we uh, present some of these dolls during this day. Um, so now that we've finished the tour, we will have a story, uh, Monkey Dance and Sparrow Dance, read by Stephanie Doy. Please enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie and I work for the Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Northern California. Today, I'm very excited to share a story from Japanese children's favorite stories. And this story that I will be reading is called Monkey Dance and Sparrow Dance. Okay, let's get started. Once there was an old woodcutter who went so far into the mountains one day for firewood that he became lost. He walked for a long time, not knowing where he was going, until he suddenly heard music in the distance and smelled the wonderful aroma of food and drink. Climbing to the top of a hill, the old woodcutter saw a great crowd of monkeys. They were eating and dancing and singing and drinking a sake that they had made from rice. The sake smelled so good that the old woodcutter wanted some for himself. 
So here's the monkeys dancing and singing. The monkeys sang and danced beautifully, much to the old woodcutter's surprise. Then one of the monkeys filled a gourd with sake and told the other monkeys that it was time for him to go home. The other monkeys wished him farewell. The old woodcutter decided to follow the monkey to see if he could get some of that sake for himself. Before long, the sake gourd grew too heavy for the monkey to carry. He stopped and poured some of the sake into a small jar. He put the jar on his head, balancing it carefully, then hid the gourd in the hollow of an old tree and went merrily on his way. The old woodcutter had been watching all this from behind a tree. When the monkey was gone, he said to himself, surely the monkey won't mind if I just borrowed some of his sake. So he ran to the hollow tree and filled his own gourd with some of the sake. This is wonderful, he thought. If this sake tastes as good as it smells, it must be very fine indeed. I'll give this to my wife, if I can find my way home. While the old woodcutter was lost in the mountains, his wife was having her own adventure. She was washing clothes under a tree when she noticed the sparrows above her having a party. They were drinking a sake that smelled so good, the old woman just had to have some. So those are the sparrows having a little party. So when the sparrows had finished dancing and singing, the old woman quickly tucked one of their sake gourds under her robe and hurried home. I'll give this to my husband, she thought, and if it tastes as good as it smells, it must be very fine indeed. No sooner had she arrived home than her husband also appeared, having finally found his way. I have something for you, they said at the same time. They told each other their amazing stories, then exchanged their sake gourds and drank deeply. The sake tasted delicious. But no sooner had they drunk it than they both felt an un uncontrollable desire to dance and sing. The old woman began to chatter and jump around like a monkey, while the old woodcutter held out his arms and chirped like a sparrow. First, the old woodcutter sang, 100 sparrows dance in the spring, chirp a chirp a chirp a chirp ching. <laughs> there they are dancing away. Then the old woman sang, 100 monkeys making a clatter, chatter, chat, chatter, chat, chatter. They made so much noise that their landlord came running to their house. There he saw the old woman dancing like a monkey and the old woodcutter dancing like a sparrow. Hear, hear, said the landlord, this will never do. A woman's dance should be graceful and ladylike like a sparrow's and a man's dance should be bold and manly like a monkey's, not the other way round. When the old couple finally stopped dancing, they told the landlord their adventures. Well, of course, he said, you've been drinking the wrong sake. Why don't you exchange gourds and see what happens? After that, the old woodcutter always drank the monkey sake and danced in a very manly way. And the old woman always drank the sparrow sake and danced in a very ladylike way. Everyone who saw them dance thought them very lovely and started imitating them. And that is why to this day, men leap around nimbly and boldly when they dance, while women are much more graceful and bird-like when they dance. And that is the end. Thank you so much for listening to this um, little Japanese tale. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That was really a great story. Uh, we're going to keep moving the program right along. And our next demonstration is Linda Mihara from Paper Tree, who has been supporting the center. Uh, please make sure to visit Paper Tree in person or online. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Linda Mihara from Paper Tree. Enjoy this craft. Hi, I'm Linda Mihara, and welcome to the Children's Day festivities for the JCCCNC um, Center here in Japantown in San Francisco. Thank you for having me. My name is Linda Mihara, and I'm an origami artist, and I'm here to teach you a really fun model to wear for Children's Day. And it's this really cool samurai helmet that's fantastic and very, very easy to do. What you will need is a roll of gift wrap paper usually something like this. It's about two feet wide, and this will make a hat that's large enough to wear. So let's get started. 
So now you have your nice wrap roll of gift wrap paper. We're just going to go ahead and unroll it and what we want to do is create a square. Super easy way to do that is to take the corner, one of the corners here, and just bring it all the way up to the top edge like this and line it up real nice and then just go ahead and make your fold. Go ahead and get some scissors and we're just going to cut this part here right at the end of the triangle okay so just go ahead and let's just give it a nice cut right along the edge like that so i'm going to turn this over so this is how you would see it um, and i'm folding upside down so this is exactly how we're going to be orienting the model so that you have your triangle like this Take each point, let's just take this one first, and we're going to bring the point up to the top of the triangle here. So go ahead and do that. And the other point of the triangle up to the top. Just like that. Nice fold. Now let's go ahead and take this and rotate it. So let's rotate it so that now these points are face down, actually facing you. So we're gonna start by taking one of the points and we're gonna bring it to this top point here. So let's just go ahead and do that. And it's actually folding the flaps in half into smaller triangles, as you see here. Same, take the same thing, do the same thing for the other flap. Bring that up. So now that you should be looking at this particular orientation of the model. So you have your two flaps up here. We're still going to do one more thing with the flaps. So what we want to do is create a fold that starts from the middle and works your way out and it, it's about halfway out. So you want to take this and you want to actually just kind of open it up like this. It's like you're peeling it open like that. So bring it over so that it lines up, you know, about halfway on this edge here from this corner to this corner, but it has to start here from the middle. Okay. And so this is the what it should look like. It's sticking out a little bit like that. And let's do the same thing for the other side. So we're going to take that, we're going to peel it open, and make it match the other side here. So make sure that it starts from that center and then comes out so that this edge here is about halfway here. So it should look just like this. Now on the bottom you have two flaps. I'm going to take just the top flap here and we're going to bring it up, oh, I would say it's about halfway on this upper triangle up in here. So just right about here. And we're going to go ahead and make a fold. My paper is curling a little bit so that you have your edge here. Now you're going to take that same edge and you're just going to fold it up as far as it'll go while keeping this part flat. You just take that and fold that up so that you have this really nice, the front rim of the helmet. So now all we're gonna do is turn it over to the other side, take that final flap and fold it up all the way. And here is a fantastic wearable samurai hat for Children's Day, May 5th. Have a great day, enjoy, have fun, and be safe. Awesome. Thank you so much, Linda. And as always, your origami instruction is so easy to follow. So please, if you have a chance, get some paper and definitely try that craft uh, if you have time with your family today. And make sure to also visit Paper Tree. We love to support Linda as she always supports us as well. And as we keep this program moving, uh, we have a very special treat for you. Susan Sakai of the San Francisco Public Library Western Edition branch will be presenting Kamishi Kamishibai, which is a form of street theater and storytelling that was popular in Japan in the 1930s. So about almost 100 years later, we are going to be uh, reading a story uh, called Nezumi Chojia, which will be read in Japanese. So please enjoy, and I'll see you after. Hi, everyone. Today I'll be reading you a Kamishibai story titled Nezumi Chojia. Nezumi means 
mouse or mice, and choja means someone wealthy, not just in terms of money, but it could also be someone wealthy in virtue or kindness. So here we go. Mukashi mukashi, aru tokoro ni kokoro no yasashi oji san ga imashita. Long, long time ago, there lived a kind hearted old man. Aru hi no koto, yama de sesse to takegi o atsumete imashita. One day, he was busily collecting some firewood. Yare yare, kokora de hita yasumi. He decided to take a break. O bento ni motte kita oishi o nigiri o tabete iru to, chu chu chu. おにぎりちょっぴりちょうだいな。一口分けてちょうだいな。As he was eating his delicious おにぎり or rice ball, he heard, Choo, choo, choo! We would like some of your rice ball. Please give us some of your rice ball. おおおおかわいいねずみさんじゃ。さあさあおあがり。おお、how cute! Of course, of course, have some. There appeared Some mice. Choo, choo, choo. Oishi na, oishi na. Ah, oishi, ah, oishi. Mmm, so delicious. After a while, Ne, o j i s a n a t a i t a c h no uchi ni kite o kure. Noni? Oide, oide, o, a t a i t a c h ga annai suri o. Yoisha, sore de wa ikuto s h i o ka. Hey, mister, why don't you come over to our, come over to our house? Yes, yes, please come over. We will welcome you. All right. I guess I'm going to the mice's house. おじいさんがネズミたちの後からついていくと、シトトントントンペッタラコ、シトトントントンペッタラコとおもちゃをつく音が聞こえてきました。As the old man followed the mice, he heard the pounding of fresh, freshly made mochi. おじいさん、どうぞこちらへ。子供たちが大変お世話になりました。Here, mister, please come in. We heard that our children were well fed by you. ネズミの御殿は賑やかです。How lively it was in the mice's house. さあさあ、どうぞ。つきたてのお餅です。たくさんたくさん召し上がってください。Now, please, please have some freshly made mochi. Please eat a lot. はいはい、どうもありがとう。Thank you, thank you, so kind of you. その後はネズミたちの踊りや歌。Afterwards, the old man was treated to the mice's dance and song. And then it was time to go home. さあ、もうそろそろ帰りましょう。それではおじいさん、お土産。Alright, before you go, we have something for you. はい、おじいさん。これをわしにくださるのかいそうですよ。これはうちでの小づち。ふれば、たからがでるのです。Here you go. For me? Yes. This is a magical gavel. If you shake it, treasures will appear. これはこれは、どうもありがとう。おじいさんが、家に帰って小づちを振ると、Once back home, the old man shook the gavel, and what do you know? 出たわ、出たわ、大番小番、金銀三五にあやにしき。あっという間に部屋中がキラキラピカピカ。There are so many treasures that appeared. ところが、この様子を窓の外から見ていたのが、隣の家の欲張りじいさん。Watching all this from next door was his greedy neighbor. よし、わしもネズミの御殿行って日本一の長者になろう。The greedy old man thought to himself, I'm gonna go to the mice's lair and make myself the richest man alive in Japan. そこで早速おにぎりを持って山へ出かけました。And so the greedy old neighbor went up to the mountain bringing some rice ball. So, la, k o i Nezumi, k o i So, la, y a r u z o Onigiri, y a r u z o Nezumi, o tabero. Dossari, tabero. Tabeta, la, nezumi, o. Ono, washi, wa, hayaku, go, ten, t r e t e ike. Here you all, mice. I have some rice balls for you. Eat, eat, eat a lot. 
and then take me to your lair. じゃあ連れて行くよ。オッケー。ちゅうちゅうどこどこ。欲張りじいさんはネズミの個展行ってごちそうになりました。So the greedy old man went to the miser's house and was treated to a feast. 欲張りじいさんはお餅を食べながらあたりをキョロキョロ。おあるぞあるぞ。宝がいっぱいあるぞ。as the greedy old neighbor ate his mochi, he was looking around. He was looking around all the treasures he saw in the room. The mice, not knowing any of this, just kept singing and dancing for him. So, the greedy old man. Being the way he is, thought, Oh, I know. If I can just get rid of these mice, the treasure is all mine. Hmm. How can I get rid of them? <coughs> the old man decided to emulate a cat. Tokoro ga taihe. Choo, choo, choo! However, However, this had the opposite effect. Not one mouse ran away. In fact, they all started attacking the old man. The old man was in tatters. Ow, ow, it hurts, it hurts. Oh. And so the greedy old neighbor went crying back home. Oh, she might the end. Nezumi Choja deshita. Awesome. Thank you so much, Suzanne and the SF Public Library Western Edition branch. That was a great story. Um, I hope you all get a chance with your families to do some form of kamishibai uh, or, you know, storytelling uh, soon, either today or sometime in the future. That was awesome. Um, we are going to switch it up now, however, and hopefully get another treat going. This time we're going to have a demonstration uh, by a Japantown youth leader named Kayla, and she will be making a koinobori bento. So please enjoy and hopefully you have a chance to make one with your family. Happy Koromo no Hi, my name is Kayla and I'm from the JCYC Japantown Youth Leaders Program. Today, I'll be showing you how to make your own Konobori Bento. Let's get started. Here's a list of the ingredients you can use, but you can really use whatever you have at home. Koinobori, otherwise known as a carp streamer, are flown to celebrate Koromo no Hi. To make your koi, you can use a number of different ingredients. I'll start by making all the koi shapes from some ingredients I have. My first koi, we will be using kanikama or imitation crab stick. First, you'll cut your crab stick to fit your bento box. Next, you'll cut a V shape on one end of the bird's tail. Once you've made your cuts, you can add the uncut end onto a long toothpick or skewer. Let's set this aside as I show you my next koi. My next koi will be made from chikua, which is a fish cake. Cut the chikua in half on the darker side. You can also cut a little bit off the other side. Then you'll cut a V shape to make the tail. You can then add the lighter side to your toothpick. For my final koi, I'm going to be using a snow pea. 
I sauteed these for a little bit so they weren't raw. You're gonna cut off a little bit at the end for the mouth and cut the other side in a V shape for its tail. And you could set it aside with your other fish. Now that we have all our kois, we're gonna start to skewer them onto our toothpicks. I've started with the snow peas and moving on to the chikawa. And lastly, the kanikama. Now that we are done skewering, we are going to add one pea as decoration to the top of the streamer. Just like that. And we're going to take our bento box and place it just right here. Moving on to the final touches to our koi. We are going to make some eyes out of some cheese and some nori. We're going to use a straw and we're going to cut out little circles for the white part of their eyes. Just like that. We have already prepared some eyes and as you can see we used a little bit of nori with this nori punch or you can use some scissors. Now that we have finished making the eyes we can add them to our koi. If you're feeling fancy, you can also add scales, but we're just going to keep it simple today. Now that we have finished making our kono bori, you can add whatever you like to your bento. Today, I'm going to add some apples and a little onigiri with nori decoration wearing a kabuto. There you have it. I'd love to see how creative you made your bento. Itadakimasu! Awesome. Thank you, Kayla and Japantown Youth Leaders for that wonderful demonstration. I hope that, you know, you're able to make one of those koinobori bentos and you can find a koinobori poster as we've seen in the day doll display earlier and you enjoy your children's day with your family. Um, we're almost coming to the end of our program. However, we do have one last performance for you all today, and that will be uh, from Ito Yosokai. Uh, we'll, they will be performing one dance called Soul of Fire. Before they get started, however, here's a little bit of information on yosakoi. Uh, yosakoi dancing uh, originated in Kochi, Japan, and combines traditional dancing movements with modern music. So please uh, enjoy this last presentation before we close out today's virtual Children's Day. Come on! とさわよいくにみなみをけてさつまおろしがそよそよとよさこいよさこい
。ありがとうございました。That was so cool. I mean, a great finale to a wonderful Children's Day. So, thank you so much to you, Ito Yosokai.、Um, if you are interested in taking classes, the center offers classes via Zoom on Fridays at 7 p.m. I highly recommend it. High energy、um, and always good vibes.、Uh, so, if you are interested, please visit the website or our website at www. Dot j c c c n c dot org. That's a J, three C's. nc.org、uh, for more information on how to join or just you know get a little more information about、uh, the group itself.、Um, but that does conclude、uh, our program today. We hope you're able to enjoy it. I know it is still virtual.、Um, however, you know we hope that you're able to you know spend some time with family around the computer and, and definitely enjoy some of the demonstrations that were given today. So, just one more time, we would like to give a huge thank you and shout out to Ito Yosokai,、uh, the Japantown Youth Leaders, Linda Mihara of Paper Tree, Su Su Susan Sakai of the San Francisco Public Library, Western Edition Branch, and a special huge shout out to all of you who attended the event and are here supporting、uh, the center as well.、Uh, for next year, we definitely hope to be in person. So, we hope to see you then. But until next time, have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming.